Next year, we're going to release a platform which is available for all other BIM softwares then. Yeah. So means everyone can actually work uh, with Convoy without having Revit. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Hey friends, welcome back to BIM Voice. Today I have the pleasure to talk to Pele Meholm, friend of mine from Norway, professional friend of mine. <laughs> Hi Pele, welcome. I'm really looking forward to this chat. Hi Pedro, thank you for having me on your podcast today. Let me just introduce myself. I'm Pelle, the founder and CEO of Conclass. Conclass is an Oslo-based startup, which I founded in 2021 in the beautiful country in Norway. My background is in civil engineering, the same as you. I actually started my career in Germany as a BIM consultant and BIM manager. And my experience spans from various open BIM projects all over Europe, yeah, from tunneling and ground engineering to infrastructure and large scale building projects. So basically my responsibility was to create and set up the BIM requirements. And of course, also to check the fulfillments. Yet many projects struggled to meet these requirements at that time. That was like 2013 went up to 2018. That was because of uh, various reasons. Of course, at that time, it was a lack of training regarding the BIM adoption and BIM method. Of course, there was always time pressure. There were trouble in data exchange. There was lack of adequate tools. And these challenges often slowed down the projects and lowered the expectation of BIM and the project. And yeah, therefore I saw like, okay, you need more to support the parties or the people who are working actually with BIM and to have to fulfill these requirements because they are the people who have to produce the results. And therefore I tried to build different automations like scripts to improve data quality, to increase efficiency and also to improve uh, collaboration between all these parties. So that was like my job in the past years, but I saw everything I did was not scalable. So in every single project, I had to do adjustments or parties had their own workflows. So you had just to yeah adjust everything and start by, by zero again, more or less. So I took then the opportunity during the pandemic to return to Oslo, where my roots are, to start my own company. And the goal was to address one recurring problem. Yeah? And that was the re uh, creation and coordination of openings for MEP services, also named Provision for Voids. And this solution uh, came out in 2021. And it's called uh, Convoy and is now used globally by architects, structural MEP engineers and general contractors. And it's gonna solve these challenges regarding this use case. Okay. Are you doing this full time or do you do any other consulting jobs as well? Or No, no, it's uh, actually a full time job. It's um kind of underestimated how much work it uh, took to build this uh, solution. So right now it's Revit plugin, but uh, what it does is actually it supports IOC, uh, the BCF format, the collaboration format and so on. And due to my goal to build solution, which do not consider where you not have to consider model requirements it was a huge task and task to build these algorithms to optimize the quality of the ic model to you get because um, it's always like lost of data when you export an ic and that that's happening a lot you receive data from microstation or other BIM softwares, uh, there's a huge loss. And what we do in our backend is to reproduce the data and improve the data quality to produce results that can be used in the design and construction stage. Mm -hmm. So this is at the moment you said that this is a Revit plugin, right? And it's used by MEP guys. MEP architects, structural engineers, general contractors, 
So all kinds of disciplines, because there's not just the creation of the openings. Yeah, it's also the coordination means if you have like a large project, such as a hospital, airport or office building, you have like a lot of MEP services included and you need thousands of openings which are going to penetrating the walls, the floors and so on. And that's, yeah, the first challenge actually to place all these openings. That's already time consuming. But the biggest challenge is then to update these openings because on a daily basis you have design changes. If the architect smooths the wall, if the MEP engineers move a pipe or resize the pipe dimension, then you have also to update the opening. Yeah. Yeah. And you have also like requirements regarding fire protection, structural requirements and so on. So all parties or disciplines have to be involved. And therefore you have like also the coordination part means one of the discipline is responsible to create and update these openings. And the other parts are responsible to re approve these openings. Means the structural engineer checks if there's enough clearance or space for the reinforcement, the fire protection is included and so on, that you build these openings before it's too late because this process is prone to errors. It often happens that the construction sites forget an opening and then you have a clash on construction site. Yeah? So you have to hire a team which is running around to drill all the holes. Some of the openings have maybe the wrong dimensions and it's a lot of rework, uh, which you can avoid actually. Yeah, it's very costly. <laughs> it's very costly to do that on site. I would definitely not, not recommend that. Uh, that's crazy. It sounds good. Do you plan to make it available for other platforms or uh, you plan to stick to Revit and just keep improving, adding features and other things? Now we are actually focusing on um, other platforms too. Revit was just the first part because it's like the biggest market. And uh, there we got also the proof of concept. So next year we're going to release a platform which is available for all other BIM softwares then. Yeah. So means everyone can actually work uh, with Convoid without having Revit. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. So you are talking about a standalone application or a cloud solution, something that doesn't need uh, an integration with the design software? Yeah, exactly. That's going to be a cloud solution, which then is supporting ISC files, the BCF format, Revit files, and so on. And then there's the integration to IKCAD, Tecla, and other BIM softwares where you can run the whole process. And that's like main goal we have for the upcoming years. Um, because we saw it's not just a problem here in Europe, it's actually all around the world. What is going to be the workflow? Like from Revit, you have this plugin, right? That communicates with the solution in the cloud or you need to push it from Revit to the cloud to do the, everything you need to do and push it back. How does this work or how will this work? The What the user will see is just like platform where they can just upload the file and at the back end, we're going to run all the calculations and so on. So I can't tell which platform we use in the back end yet. Yeah, we are running a lot of tests. Of course, there are some solutions on the market which can be used, but we already have the Revit plugin, which can be is already pretty helpful uh, because we know actually what we have to program or reprogram to provide the results we can uh, actually produce now with Convoid. Wondering from a user's perspective, right? So the user, will it also be possible to do anything just with the platform or you will need another tool to apply all the, those things? You can actually just run everything with the platform. So what you do is you upload your architecture model, your structural model and MEP models so that you have a federated model. Yeah. Okay. What Convoy then does, it runs a clash detection with a specific clash detection for, for this use case, because you probably did tons of clash detections. Uh, you have a lot of unnecessary clashes, right? So if you just hit the button, you have thousands of clashes, but maybe just 5% of the 
clashes are causing problems on construction site, right? So mm -hmm. what Convoy does is then it's just filtering the major clashes which are used for the openings. And then you, of course, have to set up your rules about the offsets and clearing zones uh, for the openings, all your fire and uh, structural requirements and so on. And then in the back end, Convoy will start creating these uh, openings. And after that, the structural engineer usually starts to approve the openings because he's the, like the main responsible discipline to check if the structural requirements are fulfilled. Sometimes it's also the architect or the fire protection engineer who is uh, also double checking. So the multi approval process and yeah, if everything is done, then the construction site is uh, getting the results by using the model or you just send out drawings. If you want to send out drawings, of course, you have to get the results back to your native BIM software, which can be Revit or IKiCad or Tecla, anything else. Yeah. You mentioned that will this improve in any way the data flow to IFC in a way that it makes the life easier when you move it to another platform? It makes it easier for the users because um, what we do, we try to work with the data we get. Yeah? As you know, there's a huge variation of the quality of IFC and we try to manage that as good as possible that the user can actually just start working with what he gets. Yeah? And that's uh, our goal to do that. We will not do any modifications on the IFC model. Yeah? That's not the part we are focusing on. Uh, we are just trying to analyze it and produce the results they need. Okay. Regarding this, because we are talking about this various quality of IFC, this is something you're dealing with since many years ago. You worked <laughs> your entire career maybe, right? Do you see any improvement in the latest years? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first IOC model I exported was in 2010. I was like a black box. I mean, uh, you, you just, what you saw is not what you got. It was totally different than what you expected. So there was like some huge improvements, yeah, but they're still, depending on the BIM software you use, some things to fix, but overall, yeah, it's a steady improvement and I'm yeah, curious how it's going to be in five years or 10 years. For me, it's not like, okay, IFC is going to be the future. It can also be something different. So I'm just working with the present and uh, see what's, yeah, what people have to work with nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe it depends also a lot which projects, which areas you work, I guess. Yeah, in Norway, there are more projects requiring this, right? So then you are a bit more focused to improve your skills regarding this, but there is still a big lack of, I don't know, the focus on interoperability in general, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, ISC is not uh, always ISC. Everyone reads it different. Yeah, and uh, that's the same with uh, the BIM collaboration format. And of course, it's somehow a standard, but a standard that can be customized in specific ways. So it's always kind of surpri surprising what you get and you really have to ensure that everything works perfectly in the project. And that's pretty time consuming for most of the people who start working with BIM yeah? to get everything lined up. Yeah. As long as uh, people who are sending are exporting to IFC, just by using default settings without doing any tweaks and uh, looking to map a bit the data is going to be a challenge, of course. But yeah, if that's the best, if you get a, like just a default IFC file exported from somebody, it's going to be a headache. Like you will need to put a lot of effort to do anything to improve it, of course. Yeah. But uh, let's leave this rant for something else for another time. <laughs> and let's focus on the, what are the other things that you are thinking that you will uh, tackle it with? Or do you have a roadmap of this product, except uh, of the part of moving in, in the cloud and uh, making uh, collaborative with other platforms? I mean, uh, yeah, that's our next step, but there are way more challenges which we want to tackle, but they are pretty time consuming. Um, now, 
like one idea or one thing I really want to solve is data. Yeah, uh, means um, projects have different requirements uh, regarding data. Yeah, and if you read some requirements of these projects, they're maybe hundred sites pages long. Yeah, and you have to fulfill and put in as much data as they need. And uh, what I see nowadays is that the user who is uh, actually modeling and producing the data do not have like the time to input the data, yeah? Uh, or keep them up to date. And uh, if a room has, or a do door has 80 different properties, yeah? There have to be many people involved to input the data. Yeah, and now it's mainly yeah, the user or a team who is like adding these data afterwards, mostly when the as built model is created. But it's not like a steady task they do. Uh, they are just doing it after like specific stage. So you always have to wait to start analyzing the models to run the quantity takeoff and so on. So my thought was like, okay, is it somehow possible to help the user that solution or an app can predict these uh, properties for, for him? Yeah, means you are modeling a wall, you're starting creating the rooms and the app immediately predicts, okay, this should be bathroom, this should be office room because um, the sizes, because of other elements around, it should be an office building. And then he's just um, popping up uh, with message that you can then accept to avoid this manual work uh, that you just um, type in your data and don't forget to keep them up to date. Yeah? I think it would be a bit too tedious job, a bit crazy, a very inefficient uh, if you would rely on updated all these parameters manually, to be honest. So if you don't use uh, parametric design or Python or scripting something or tools, smarter tools, I think there, then you are quite, you set up yourself for a failure in a way, because that's why you end up like it's impossible to do it manually. Like if you go by to do that for each element it would be crazy especially like there are also different types of properties right that could be maybe easier to classify by a type of object or something like that but if you talk about unique identifiers or something like this then you are going to have a problem a big one i totally agree i mean one user can maybe handle two properties or parameters yeah during design stage otherwise you have to do it as automatic as possible, but you first have to, you need the information yeah, from all the project participants, from the quantity surveyor, from the construction site. And that's also communication part, yeah, which is uh, pretty important. And often the one who needs the model do not have all the information. So somehow everyone needs to be involved. It's not just click and script is like filling out all the parameters. It has to be, yeah, a little bit more intelligent than that. Definitely, definitely. I mean, like, that's a good place to start, starting with the information that you know, that you are aware about. Like, you will know the dimensions, you will know the quantities, right? If that needs to be a property, like custom property, otherwise you just leave it, uh, you map it on uh, like, uh, using the schema, but if you need it like custom, then you need to do that. That's something that you can work with, right? And then, yeah, that's why you need this back and forth and uh, maybe using BCF or not, maybe possibly. And uh, the best way would be to use BCF uh, to communicate. And of course, to get the right input from the right stakeholder, because otherwise, of course, you will not be able to provide that information. But having uh, this kind of structure, like automating stuff, it will definitely help and save a lot of time, especially when it comes like, let's say, an unique identifier, an ID for an element, like it would be crazy to go and just do a table in Excel and try to put it in manual or something like that. You need to automate that and it should not be very complex, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty complex. We also handle like the problem with the unique identifier convoy solution, because an example is MAP engineering is placing an opening. Yeah? They run the approval process. Everything is based on this unique identifier. Yeah? Then he's accidentally deleting this uh, opening. 
and placing the same location and the data is lost or the connection of, is lost. So what we trying to handle then is to build up a history yeah, based on different data to reproduce uh, the connection again. And that's pretty difficult task when using IFC because of some export problems or something like that, the unique identifier can just change or you have to maybe change it. And it's not always consistent as you expect. And yeah, then you lose the connection and you have to rebuild a lot again. Yeah. And also you say that you have your tool does that. Can you tailor that? Can you use that feature in a way that you can based on the requirements of a project? Because many projects, especially the larger ones, have already some rules for how you should establish these tags or IDs or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we are using five different IDs yeah, to try to track every change or every connection. And also on top of that, we have like other data about the location of the element, the sizes and so on. So if something got deleted yeah, mm -hmm. and you have to recreate link to properties of the database, it's running through different IDs, which can still exist. If they do not exist, then he's searching like in our history file. Okay. That was around in this location, this element, it had this size and these properties. Yeah. So it. I assume this is the connection to this element in the database. Mm -hmm. And that's the way how we s try to ensure a steady link to, to the database or the data. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Where can somebody uh, interested in your solution go and uh, read and learn more about it? Well, we have a website, it's conquest.tech. There you can just uh, download our trial version. It's 14, 14 days for free. There's also a user guide with more than two hours tutorials where every step described and uh, shown with videos and uh, images. So that's like, yeah, you can invest a little bit of time to start working with it. But uh, one thing which is good, you can actually start immediately because it can handle all kinds of models. Yeah, doesn't matter where it comes from, as long as it's a Revit or ISC file. When should the other cloud solution? Uh, do you have an estimate for that when you plan to launch that? I mean, uh, the beta release will be at the beginning of next year. And then we're going to have like a six months beta. And after that, we going to release the full version. And of course, we're going to continue to develop it. Uh, it's not then done after that. It's going to take a while until like everything is like my expectations are yeah, for this uh, solution. Okay. Uh, what about the Revit plugin? Uh, does it work with all the most recent versions of Revit or any limitations about that? We are supporting Revit 2020 up to 2024. Yeah, that's like five versions you can use and um, that's mostly also used by our customers so the main version is probably 2022 okay what about if somebody wants to contact you directly just to ask you more things about the product if they have any questions or about this episode they can contact me via my email address or they can just go on our website there we have a chat they can start uh, just chatting with us and we also give demos webinars and yeah maybe you can just link the website down below definitely i'll put it in the description so it's going to be easy to to find it definitely all right thank you very much for joining me and good luck with the launch thank you Bye-bye.